Well, welcome back to part two of decluttering our paper. So in the last video, we talked about how to really quickly sort through all of your existing paper clutter. And really we worked to just pare it down to just a very little bit that we have to keep. And we introduced the scale of how easy to how difficult it is to replace things. And that was kind of our barometer we used to decide if we could just chuck it or not. And so coming up today, we're gonna take that little bit of stuff that we do have to keep to run a household. And I'm gonna show you how we organize it in our house and a few other tips for success as well. Okay, so let's keep talking about paper clutter. So I want to show you how we handle paper clutter in our house, but knowing this, that this is definitely an area where you just have to tailor it to what works for your house and your household. So we all have different spaces. We all have different numbers of people in our house, and we all have different numbers of activities that we're trying to organize and juggle and all of that. So I'm just gonna show you what works best for us and how my system's kind of evolved over the years to what it is. And then hopefully you can take some of the ideas and apply them to your house. So let's talk about digital versus paper storage. I don't know, call me old fashioned, but I've had a really hard time developing a digital system that works well for our household. I know there are no shortage of apps and there are no shortage of places to store things online. There's a few things that I worry about with digital. One is that I have a tendency just to keep more stuff because it's digital, but that still is inventory that I have to manage. And the second thing is that I still have to figure out a way to organize them and to label them so that I can reference them again if I need them. And then the third thing is of course security and longevity to know that our files especially some of our personal information is staying safe and that I'll be able to access it long term or if anyone in my family ever needed to get to it that it's easy for them to find as well so because of these reasons I find it easier just to keep paper the things that come into our house as paper I store as paper just the things we need and things that I get digitally I keep digitally, but I don't try to convert paper to digital and I don't try to print out everything digitally to store paper. So if you were hoping to find tips and ideas for how to store things digitally, unfortunately you're not gonna find that here today, but of course there are no shortage of resources out there. So best wishes with that because I think it can work. I know people do it well, it's just not for me. With that being said, the paper that comes into our house, like I said in the last video, we really just came up with a barometer of if we actually really physically need to keep it. And so one of the principles that I applied when developing our system is of course this idea of inventory that we have to manage that I've been talking about in my other videos. So if we have paper coming in, I have to determine, do I really absolutely have to keep this? It, I get rid of so much now that I don't keep because I know I have the same thing in my email in back box from the kids' school or that I can access that bill online or I already have an account set up online to deal with it. So I'm like, really ruthless with the paper when it comes into our house if we actually need to keep it or not. The second thing is that I know that if I'm gonna file it, I have to be able to find it again later. So one of the KonMari principles is to not over categorize the things that we're gonna keep. So have the general folders, and then the other thing I do is I put a year on it, so I know at the end of a year that I can get rid of things confidently, but I'll show you more about that coming up. And then the third principle is that I really try for as many things as possible to only handle it one time. And so I'm gonna walk through some examples and I'll show you kind of how that plays out with different things that comes into our house. But first, let me give you a tour of our little office area here and show you exactly how I organize things. So the basics of my setup are a filing cabinet, which you could just have a small filing box, a plastic box. We had that up until we moved into this house and it was plenty big enough. I have an inbox and then I also have these file folders on the wall. They wouldn't have to be on the wall, but I already had this hanging here, so I decided to make use of it. And then above my desk, I also have these clipboards. I use the top two rows for real estate and then on the bottom row, I have a clipboard for Tom. So this is things that I need him to do. For example, on it right now is a wedding card that I need him to write in for his cousin and then next to it is kind of just a brain dump clipboard that I use to brainstorm ideas for my videos so as I'm you know doing something like making dinner or cleaning or anything else and an idea comes to me 
I just have that as kind of a free writing space to jot it down. And then on this back wall, I have a calendar. This is just for reference. I don't keep appointments on here or anything like that. Those I put a reminder in my phone, but this is just so I can look ahead if someone wants to schedule something I can see three months in a, at a glance. And then it's also a family calendar, so it has birthdays and holidays and different things like that on it as well. Now, it's super nice that I have this little office area. Like I talked about in the kitchen simplification video, I really advise you to get all of your paper clutter out of the kitchen just because it creates stress and if you're anything like me, if the kitchen is cluttered or stressful, I don't cook in it. And so as you can see, obviously I have this little, you know, office area here, but if you don't have an office space in your house, I mean, a corner of a living room or bedroom really only takes a small space to keep these kinds of things. Okay, so let's talk about files. This system works really well for me. The only thing I have to be aware of is kind of like Con Marie says, is don't over categorize. In the past, I had way too many categories of file folders, and then I wouldn't end up getting things into the right place because I didn't remember I'd created a file for it, or I was like, where do I put that? So now I make general reference files. So I have a home reference and a medical reference. I don't keep a medical folder for each person. I keep one reference file. Now, if you have someone in your house that has more medical problems and a lot of paperwork then of course you might want to have one for them for certain folders I put a year on it so like my bills paid folder I do not keep every bill I pay I only keep track of ones that I don't pay on a regular basis so like our electricity bill I don't put in there our phone bill internet those don't go in there because I can very clearly see online that the payment has been made and posted so the only bills paid I keep are ones that could affect our credit so for example my bills paid 2017 once 2018 is over I'm gonna get rid of that and so I do keep them for one year I archive it um, just in case again I would need it but then after that I can feel confident throwing that whole folder away so same with a folder for shopping receipts anything that I think I might need to return or for which some reason need a receipt or um, if I would want to enforce a warranty or anything like that they just all go into this 2018 receipts folder and then again after a year or two I feel very confident just getting rid of the whole folder. So again, why I kind of still like the paper system is because I don't have receipts stored online from 2015 or 16 or whatever. I keep it for a year or two and then I just get rid of it. Okay, so let's talk about an inbox or a to-do folder. I love the Fly Lady and I know she like promotes desk days where one day a week you go through your to-do file or your actionable items folder or something like that. Here's what happened for me. A, I wasn't consistent with a desk day. Part of it's our, we just kind of have an unpredictable schedule. But what else happens for me? If I put it in a to-do folder and it is inside a folder where I don't visually see it, I don't, I don't ever do anything with it. I don't, I don't, to me that folder looks empty unless it's like bulgy and full. So a to-do folder, as much as I wanted it to work because it kind of kept things out of sight until I was ready to deal with it, it did not work and I ended up missing things that I needed to do. So now I have a to-do inbox on my desk and it's good because I can just see things in it. Now, with that being said, again, just how I'm wired, like I don't get a natural high out of organization or any of this. I don't see myself as a super organized person. So I have to put systems in place in my life that things get done and they don't get overlooked. So for my to-do box, if it is something that needs to be handled like that day or in the next even one or two days, like one of the kids' permission slips for a field trip or you know turning in registration for something like that, I try to deal with that as soon as it comes into the house. Again, that idea of just only handling things once. When the kids take it out of their backpack folder, I try to just fill it out right away, put a check with it, you know, fill it in. If it's something that maybe Tom and I need to discuss, then I try to stick it on his clipboard. I have to remind him of those things, like he doesn't go and check it on his own, but I see it, like I see it there, and then when he comes home, it registers with me to talk about it with him. Or if worst case, if I can't deal, it, deal with it right away, I put it on my keyboard so that it is one of the first things I deal with when I do have a few minutes of time. So what kinds of things end up in there? Uh, rebates I need to send in, a warranty I might need to apply for. If there is like a sports thing for the kids or a camp, but I need to maybe look into it a little more or I'm not actually sure yet if they're gonna do it. But really, I, I like I said, I try to get things straight to their homes right away, whatever folder they're supposed to get in because like they're literally like 
two inches away from the inbox. But what I like about my to-do box, a lot of times I'll just sort through it when I'm like talking on the phone or if I'm, you know, online chatting about something and I'm waiting for someone to reply. So I'll just kind of glance through it and sort through those things quickly. And so I know someone asked like, oh, are you gonna tell me that I have to process my mail every day as I'm walking in the door? Yes, please do that. But I think if you get a system set up where everything literally has a home and it's really simple and it's streamlined, and if we pair that with changing our mindset that we do not have to keep everything that comes into our house, I think you're gonna find that it's actually really easy and manageable. But let's I mean, talk about a few things that come in on a regular basis. So like bills, when they come in, I open the envelope, I pull out just the actual sheet that I need, and I put that straight into our bills folder. So I don't try to put everything in my to-do bin because then it gets overwhelming and then I feel stressed by it and I don't do it. So I try to handle as much of the things as they come in like right away. So bills, uh, like I said, coupons, go right into the meal planning, if you use those, I don't use them, but if you have some coupons, put it right into your meal planning folder. You know, kids stuff, if we can just deal with it right away, deal with it right away. Or let's, I should have talked about this in my last video, what about things like kids award certificates, well baby checks up, or different things like that. What we have are called baby boxes, they're kind of like scrap boxes, and that's what my next video is gonna be about. So I just try to toss it straight into there. Or receipts, they go straight into the receipts folder. So I really try not to put too much stuff in my to-do box because I know I get overwhelmed by it easily. Okay, so let's just talk about a few more tips for success. Like I said, I'm, I tend to be more of a paper person. I still keep to-do lists on paper and you know I keep paper copies of these things that we need. But there are a few exceptions. For example, I have missed school picture day the last two years. At least this year I caught it like five minutes before my mom got here to pick up the kids for school. And I it doesn't make a big difference to me what they wear for picture day, but our girls are getting to the age where they care what they're wearing and how their hair was done for picture day. And so I had written it just on my overall planning calendar, but I didn't take the 30 seconds to put a reminder into my phone. And so there we were scrambling on picture morning. And so I have found that anything schedule related, I do need to keep in my phone now and I need to schedule reminders. So same with like sports schedule, conferences, any activities at the school we need to be at. And then for business as well, I have to put it into my phone. If a sheet of paper comes in and it has a date and time of something I need to do, I put it into my phone. I put the details, if there's anything we need to bring or anything like that into my phone. And if I do need that piece of paper, I try to just take a picture of it on my phone so I have it with me and I discard the sheet of paper. And so that has been really helpful. So I do recommend you keep a schedule on your phone. Uh, the other thing that I never thought I would invest in is a label maker. And so like I've said before, I don't really get a kick out of organization. You know, sometimes I see like pantries or different things and everything's beautifully labeled and color coordinated containers and it's gorgeous and like, I'm like, that's not me. And so I put off for a long time getting one of these, but I do know, and I talked about it in my laundry video, that we just need to make it really easy for our brain. And so having very clearly labeled uniform labels and folders has made life a lot easier. And so this was under $20 on Amazon, so I'll link to this down below. Very easy to use and set up, like right out of the box. So I do recommend this one. And please hear me, if you are like really into organization and labeling and all that, like I think that's awesome. Like good for you, I'm not putting that down at all, I'm just saying that's not me. And like I said, for the longest time, we got by with just one of those pl small plastic file folder containers. Now we keep more stuff for business, so we got a little bit bigger file cabinet, but I only use the top drawer and the bottom one, I just keep like my pens and pencils and that stuff in. So it does not require a lot of space if we're being intentional about not keeping too much stuff. Okay, well, I know there's a lot of people excited about this video and waiting for it, so I hope it lives up to your expectations. If there's anything I missed, feel free to leave a question or a comment. And coming up next, I'll show you inside those baby boxes and what we keep inside of them. And in the meantime, the best compliment you can give us is a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe so that we can keep in touch.